how can we encourage change with distracted driving? Now that's something we really want to do, right? And that means design the roads differently. New research is showing that how a city is actually planned can help change behavior behind the wheel. Here to tell me all about it is Zenwa Chin, Assistant Professor in City and Regional Planning at Ohio State University. Zenwa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peggy. So let's talk about the research. I know that there's a lot been done about distracted driving. What did you actually find out? Yes. Um, actually, you know, as uh, Philip mentioned earlier, it, we're very excited because we just launched this research and started trying to investigate the built environment and the distracted driving, looking into the severities and the frequencies, you know, of these kind of crashes using Ohio as an example. And uh, we believe, you know, uh, there has been a lot of uh, interactions between, you know, distracted driving and, uh, you know, built environment and natural environment as well. However, you know, right now there has been very limited study on that. So we're using some empirical data based on the crash data from the Ohio Department of Transportation and trying to look into that issues. When you look at distracted driving and roads right now, did you really think you were going to discover that roads are actually contributing or could reduce distracted driving? Did you anticipate that? Very excellent questions. In fact, you know, the, when we talk about the beauty environment, it's not just about the road itself, it's also about its uh, other types of uh, features, such as, you know, some of the, uh, you know, billboards, such as, uh, you know, single designs and so on and so forth. In fact, you know, we have conducted some preliminary uh, literature review. Uh, what we find is that actually, you know, as you probably know that the billboards actually has highly correlated with the crash rate. In other words, you know, with the more billboards, as you can see, people get more distracted. That's the, just an example shows how our roads design, our environment, built environment actually affected the driving behavior. But let's talk about that. When you're talking about existing cities versus newer cities, you know, you have urban environments. How do you combat that when you look at what is already being built versus what's going to be built? Those are kind of, a, it's a bit of a challenge, correct? Yes, yes, that's, that's definitely true. So I think, you know, there has been different things we have to do as a city planners. First, uh, we needed to think about how to improve our existing infrastructure system. In other words, you know, are there any things that we can improve to make our roads be even safer? For example, you know, study also has been pointed out, you know, uh, if you look into the tunnels, the, uh, the light colored, uh, you know, ward designs becomes much more efficient in terms of helping people be more focused for wood rather than uh, bright illuminations. Again, so that's just an example it shows how we can make changes to the existing infrastructure system. But if we look into the futures, apparently we needed to think about how, what kind of strategies, what kind of uh, planning, you know, activities may help to make our roads be even safer. So um, that's why we need this kind of research. Um, unfortunately, we find that the, the existing knowledge on this field is very, very limited. That's why we are very passionate about that kind of research. We talk about smart cities now. That's like the big buzzword. How does this yes. apply to this research apply to what is considered smart cities or does it? Yeah, that's a, another excellent question. In fact, here in Columbus, everybody talks about the smart city. So in my personal humble opinions, smart city not just simply means autonomous vehicle. It means how we can really integrate with the data, with the sensing, with the all kinds of uh, information. And based on that information, to use the information to guide the planning, guide to the operation and management. So from that perspective, there has been a lot of things to be, can be done to improve the, you know, uh, the roads and to, to reduce the distracted driving. For example, here at Ohio State uh, University, we have really uh, interdisciplinary teams. Uh, although it hasn't been started yet, but we envision in this uh, forthcoming years, we're trying to work together based on you know, computer science uh, and also data analytics. Uh, so we are able to hopefully you know, collect the sum of the data, so sensing uh, of the people's driving behavior, and then trying to analyze, you know, how we can use that information to guide for planning. So that way we can really achieve our, you know, a smart kind of, uh, you know, operations. 
Well, we've talked about roundabouts actually helping with reducing maybe some distracted driving. Yes. But what about other types of designs and roads that might help some other knucklehead who decides to use his mobile device while he's driving? Because we know we are not getting you know, younger generations or, or people to put down their, their mobile devices. So what other layouts in city planning are there to help us you know, think about that to make the yes. roads a little safer? Yeah, uh, well, um, thank you for that question. So as Philip mentioned, you know, in fact, uh, you know, there has been many, many things that we have to consider. You know, runabout is one of the, you know, probably uh, applications. Now, many city planners at Ohio are trying to implement it. There's also the curvatures of the road. For example, you know, by adding more curvatures to the road design, uh, there is ways to reduce the speed a as well. Um, so uh, apparently, right now, there hasn't been a consistent understanding in that. That's why we are trying to do in this kind of studies by factoring different types of roads considerations, their features, such as their pavement, their intersection types, and their uh, contours, and so on and so forth. Uh, the goal is really to really identify what types of uh, road designs and uh, will affect you know, the driving behavior, the crashes, and how we can really improve that. So that's what we hope we could you know, uh, um, you know, get some concrete uh, research out through this project. I guess I have one, I know we're running out of time, but realistically, how do you think we're going to get city planners to really get other cities to understand we have to do something? We talk about there's a lot of money, a trillion dollars the yes. president wants to put forth. Are we going to make other city planners and governments understand now's the time to do this and we have to because it's the right thing to do? Yes, Peggy, another excellent question. Uh, I'm totally with you. So uh, in my, again, humble opinions, what I find is a lot of times people are not really aware of this from you know, a research perspective, from the you know, data perspective. People just didn't know there's a linkages there, there's a way we can improve that. So I think you know what we could do is really through a kind of uh, interdisciplinary approach, like what Risk Institute right now has been doing. We're trying to work with the legislation. We're trying to work with the people who are doing you know behavior science. We're also working with people who are you know dealing with the technologies. That way we are you know be able to work collaboratively, and uh, you know get some results out, and hopefully you know we can really help to educate the public, educate our decision makers so that we are able to move in the same directions and in a more efficient matters on this issue. Well, I thank you so much, Zenwa Chin, for being with us today. Thank you, Peggy. It was a pleasure. Well, we really enjoyed it. You are the Assistant Professor in City and Regional Planning at Ohio State University. Thank you so much. And that's our Learn It for today.